Good morning. It's still morning, right? It's been a very long morning. Okay. Um, welcome to the Cisco Sponsor Track Room. This is the fourth and final session for us today. Glad you were able to join us. Um, Going to quickly introduce our two presenters, Haman Shuraj and Sanjeev Rampal from our uh, container team, part of the cloud products, uh, cloud platform and services group. We're going to do a little quick talk for you on uh, networking policies across, across containers and VMs. And with that, Hamanshu. Oh, and just one last thing. Be sure to stop by the Cisco booth to check out some demos we've got, as well as on your way out today, stage right. We've got some runs on OpenStack running socks, so grab them at the door on your way out. And thank you all for coming. And I'm going to get out of the way. All right. OK. Mic working fine. Great. Uh, welcome again. Uh, and almost happy afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Uh, I know we are between you and lunch, so we will try to be on time uh, and get it done. Uh, the good thing is lunch is right across the, uh, across the hallway. So. It's not too far. So uh, again, uh, Sanjeev and I, we are going to talk about uh, unified policy enforcement for containers and VMs and in general bare metal. Right, so let's get the show started. Um, so the infrastructure today is presenting this really nice opportunity right, to do the mixed mode application deployment based on your application needs and where it is in the state of evolution, your overall application, it can be nicely deployed as either bare metal components, VMs on OpenStack, and if the number of Kubernetes presentations in this conference has not convinced you yet on containers very soon, right? So the, uh, what are some of the challenges in this model? Um, uh, we know this is where the world is headed to, but this, this architecture has three main challenges. One is, how do you do an end-to-end -end policy design and enforcement? We have some policy enforcement points for uh, VMs. We have for bare metal. We have containers. How do you put them all together? Um, how do you do end-to-end -end monitoring in this? Um, some of the uh, you know, uh, challenges there are, well, you have monitoring data coming from one, one layer and um, it doesn't understand and know about other layers. How do you put it all together? And then how do you make use of your infrastructure capabilities to get the best performance you need? Right? So just to illustrate on the last bullet a little bit, this is how traditionally people just put the networking together. Right? Um, you have bare metal, and then you get VMs. So you put overlays on top, and then you get containers inside VMs. So you put one more overlay, and so you get overlay on overlay on overlay. Um, and in this kind of a world, you, again, end up with all the challenges. Um, uh, all, all this in cap hurts your performance. That also obscures the visibility. Your lower layer does not know about higher layers. So it is just looking at tunnels, so you don't know what's going on. And it also makes it challenging to uh, integrate with some of the hardware appliances that you might have. Right? So overall, um, these are some of the challenges that the mixed mode deployments um, are facing or will face. So to address some of these challenges, um, we are going to talk about Contiv Container Networking and how it, it uh, um, takes care of some of these challenges. So this is the rest of the uh, talk's agenda. So um, we are going to, having gone through the, uh, the hybrid deployment challenges a little bit, we are going to now talk about um, the Contiv Container Networking. Um, in brief, no, not in too much detail. I'm happy to talk more about it after, the, after the, uh, the presentation. And there are some links in there as well. Uh, the main topic of uh, discussion today is the integration between the Cisco's SDN Fabric ACI and Contu, uh, which allows us to do end-to-end -end policy enforcement, monitoring, better performance, uh, all the good stuff. The focus of today's talk is purely on the end-to-end -end policy enforcement. Again, um, the other benefits are 
uh, are there. They're available. Just we are not talking about it today. And you're welcome to talk to us uh, afterwards or go try it out. It's all it's all open source of lab. And uh, um, this will be followed by a live demo. And I hope the uh, demo guards uh, are happy and we are able to do the live demo. But just in case, we also have uh, a recorded demo as well. So you would see something. All right. So without further ado, what is Contiv? Um, Contiv is a container networking uh, fabric. It is a 100% open source solution, right? So, so nothing, nothing proprietary about it. The two features that make Contiv sort of most powerful container networking fabric are its support for a lot of networking nodes. So you can, of course, use overlay to, to again, put your containers together quickly on bare metal or VMs, but it has the capability to run containers in L2 mode or L3 mode, which basically puts your containers on the same plane as your VMs or bare metal. And that's what is so cool about um, using Conti with your containers is because now all of a sudden you have the visibility in your whole infrastructure at every level. And it integrates with ACI. So we will we'll talk more about ACI coming up, but um, if you have ACI capable fabric, it, it integrates with that well, gives you all the benefits of defining a unified policy, enforcement, and so on. Uh, and it has some, you know, um, um, RBAC capabilities and all the enterprise features built in and so on and so forth. Um, it's, it's available today. Uh, it works with uh, Kubernetes, OpenShift, and Docker Swarm. And it's an open source community project. It has been made to work with Mesos uh, and Nomad and all as well. But we support officially uh, these three platforms that are listed there. Okay, um, so focusing a little bit on the policy side of Contiv, what it has, what it provides. Um, it, it's a high level architecture, right? So um, there is a concept of a policy manager where you go and define policies um, and then Contiv takes those policies and then uh, distributes it uh, working with the uh, container scheduler platform uh, like Swarm or, or Kubernetes and gets it onto all of the hosts where the actual policy enforcement takes place by the Contiv uh, agent. And uh, this uh, policy layer integrates with underlying hardware uh, as and when required. So the policy system uh, that we just quickly glanced over, uh, it provides, it enables uh, micro-segmentation for your applications. What that means is that you not only have your applications that you can, you have to isolate using networks, you can, if you're familiar with some of the ACI terminology, uh, it, it can create groups of those applications, so some of the tiers of your applications can be further broken down into endpoint groups or application groups, and you can define policies on that. So you, you have the ability this way to define policies uh, on a specific parts of your application, and this, is, this provides a granular way to define more policies based on how your application is constructed that's you know, scalable. So this is as much as I'm gonna go into detail uh, about the Contiv at the high level uh, in terms of policy. Uh, now switching gears a little bit, going to what ACI is, right? The, I alluded to a little bit before. Um, so it's a Cisco SDN fabric. It enables the network administrators to define an application-centric view of your application, as shown on top. You have multiple tiers like web, app, TB, and so on. And it has the capability to take that distill it um, into policies that are uh, applied at the fabric layer, right? So you group your applications into, again, endpoint groups. You define those policies, and then you, you basically um, deploy it on this fabric, and then the policies are going to be enforced in the fabric itself. 
right? So you don't need anything else to, uh, to, to, to enforce the policies, the top of rack switches and um, up level spines and leaves and whatnot, they will do the actual enforcement. So this is uh, um, what, what uh, ACI provides, right? So if you haven't guessed where this is going, um, basically Contiv is doing exactly this for your containers without requiring ACI, of course. Contiv is generic. It works with any L2 infrastructure, L3 infrastructure, or even with overlay, right? So Contiv does that all for your containers. ACI has the capability to do it for uh, your bare metal and virtual machines. Now let's put them together. And that's where we will get the wonders of integrating Contiv and ACI, uh, which um, the, the very first and the key uh, part that we are going for in this presentation is uniform policies for any workload. So you have the mixed mode workload that you're gonna build with um, you know, bare metal components, virtual machine components, containers, and now with this integration, you have the ability to define a uniform policy uh, works end to end. Right? Uh, you get policy automation. You don't need to now go at different places and type out you know, some policies and upload them in this place and then define container policies differently and so on. You, have, you, you can automate it all. These are all, uh, the, all of the SDN controllers provide REST APIs and you can use your favorite tools to build out an end to end automation for your policies. Uh, you get the scale benefits that you know you otherwise uh, you know get for just ACI. Everything is the same. Everything is working at the same endpoint level. Your containers have an IP address, just like your host has an IP address, just like your VM has an IP address. Everything is visible end to end. Um, you get high performance. You are not paying the cost of encapsulation, encapsulation, right? And um, you get you know, good visibility, telemetry, diagnostics, all of that. You, you, you have a single pane of glass now, and you can see what's going on in your overall system. So this is how, at a high level, the integration works. Um, I showed the, 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 the slide earlier about Contiv, um, where we have the policy manager or the master or the controller, whichever, you know, uh, the, the control plane master, however you want to call it, that uh, controller component, uh, which is integrating very tightly with the container management platforms, Kubernetes and Docker. And it has a smaller component in itself called APIC Gateway. Um, APIC is the uh, controller for ACI platform. And using that gateway, it integrates with the APIC controller. Uh, that is deployed in the underlying uh, fabric. So this way, your APIC is working with your bare metal machines, your uh, you know VMs that are running on OpenStack, on on you know Hyper-V, VMware, all those integrations that are already there. And with this integration that we did with uh, you know ACI and Contiv, now you have similar integration available for containers, right? So we have the Contiv. Um, agents that are running on the hosts and uh, uh, and the end to end the policies that you define on your container cluster makes its way into ACI using this integration. So just as an example, how this all works, right? How it all works together. Yeah, you know, this is a sample workflow. How people use um, Contiv and ACI. So you create your, a, a network admin goes and creates the, uh, uh, the, uh, the objects that they already do with ACI. Uh, they, they define a tenant for the network, create a network and so on. And then they, they, all of that information is exposed to Contiv because Contiv is integrating with APIC. So you define them in your you know, APIC controller uh, in, inside your ACI Contiv ingests that information, and that information is available to you in container landscape. Then the container administrator comes in, uh, builds out some policies around the container workload. And those policies are you know, a sample policy that it shows, right, that how you know, um, web containers uh, are going to talk which, uh, um, to, to DB containers or what port and so on. And those policies are automatically converted 
into ACI policies, and they are pushed into APIC. Right? So when this workload is then deployed in the system, using the container scheduler of your choice, Swarm, Kubernetes, and the workload lands into different hosts in the platform, your policy goes with it. ACI Fabric it has taken the policy that you defined earlier and has now pushed it to those top of rack switches all the way in that whole fabric. So when your communication is gonna happen between the containers or between containers and bare metal or container and VMs, the policy will be enforced into it. So that as much talking um, I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm going to now hand it over to my partner in crime, Sanjeev, who is gonna do a demo of this overall system. Sanjeev, come on, take it over. You need more space. This is working? Mike? Okay. Thanks, Imanshu. So, yeah, I'll, uh, we'll try and do a live demo. Uh, we have to VPN in into Cisco for this, so there's a chance something along the way could go wrong, but we think hopefully it should work, and then uh, I need to make sure I have not logged out, so let me go ahead and log it in. Okay, so um, okay. So what are we going to demo? So so this is uh, sort of the physical uh, model that we are uh, th that represents our demo topology. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about this later. But what is it really? Is two side by side clouds, right? So we talked about mixed mode applications. Uh, how exactly do you are you running one cloud on top of the other? Are they side by side? You know which way. So in this case, we have cloud A, which is represented by those black squares, which are the servers, and that's our quote unquote container cloud running on bare metal, right? So that's uh, running side by side with cloud B, which is our uh, VM cloud, right? That could be OpenStack, that could be uh, vSphere, right? And these are connected by a common networking fabric which is that spine leaf architecture which Shimanshu was talking about. In, in this demo, it's an ACI fabric. So this is the model that we are going with. We expect a lot of customers will do this because this allows them to get maximum performance both for the containers and the VMs. Both are running individually on bare metal. There's no tunneling of one on top of the other, right? But uh, by having the integration that we uh, we've been talking about and which we'll demo now, we show that we will get that seamless uh, view uh, without needing to tunnel one on top of the other, right? So this is the network we are using. Uh, again, these are representing the clouds that uh, these servers map to. Okay, what is the demo application? So uh, uh, a pretty simple application is what we're gonna use here. Uh, this is a multi-tier application. Um, some of the components of the application have been containerized, and some of the components of the application are running in VMs. That may be either a transition scenario for somebody moving to containerization. That may be a permanent configuration. We don't think we can anticipate all the different combinations of containers and VMs that customers will want to try. But you know, this is a reasonable uh, uh, a pattern that we expect will be used. So everything about the black line is running in Cloud A, which is um, on a container cloud running on bare metal. Everything below the black line is running on an IaaS service. Uh, in this particular demo, we shall use sort of uh, the front end components of, of an application will be running in, in the container cloud. Uh, so we've actually got several components there, a um, load, load balancer, HA proxy, uh, balancing to two front-end uh, web components, which are Nginx containers, and they are then connected to back-end container components, which are Alpine Linux uh, containers in this demo, and eventually they are connecting to um, a virtual machine on a separate cloud, but that cloud is sitting side-by-side -side with the container cloud. So this is the uh, tier topology that we're gonna use. Uh, we're gonna create a logical service for that first tier, and we're gonna assign it a group. We're gonna call it the default group. Uh, we're gonna have 
a tier for the second uh, layer, and this is uh, these containers are going to be assigned to the privilege group. The privilege group gets to talk to the virtual machines on the virtual machine cloud, and the containers in the default group do not get to talk to them. So this is essentially a form of micro-segmentation. We are segmenting even within the application which components can talk across clouds, which can, what are the communication patterns within the cloud and across clouds. So with that, let's switch to the CLI and uh, run the demo from there. So the display isn't switching to that. There's always one demo god that isn't happy, at least one. <clears throat> and god doesn't use Mac usually, so. Or. Okay. All right, so. Hopefully everybody can see this. The lettering is large enough. Yeah, looks like, is it fine? OK. So we have a demo script, so we, I'll just run through that. So let's see. OK, so what do we have in this environment? So we actually happen to be running an OpenShift cluster for, for, uh, for the container cloud here. So as you might know, OpenShift is a distribution of Kubernetes. Uh, we are using OpenShift origin in this case, which is the open source version of OpenShift. 1.4, which is using Kubernetes 1.4, as seen here. Um, and we're using uh, Contiv, uh, a very recent version of Contiv. You see the version here, 1.0.1, 1. 0. 1, uh, released just a few weeks ago. Netcuttle is the CLI interface for Contiv. Um, Contiv has a number of different management interfaces. There's a CLI interface, there's a GUI interface. We shall be using the CLI interface for this demo. OK, so let's just check what's going on in our cluster. We've got a, a cluster of four bare metal nodes. Let's just run through this a little bit quickly because we missed a little bit of time. So let's look at some global settings of uh, Contiv. Uh, you can see that it's set to run in ACI mode. As Himanshu mentioned, Contiv supports a number of modes. And uh, you know we can go over with you offline about the pros and cons of different modes. In this demo, we're using the ACI mode. Um, we've given, given it a few parameters to work with. Uh, you know, as an example, a range of VLANs to use to indicate uh, the Contiv networks into the ACI fabric. So let's keep going. Um, we've pre-created some uh, what we call contracts in NetPlugin. These are analogous to contracts in ACI, but these are Contiv contracts. Now, in this case, these are external contracts because we've imported contracts from an external cloud somewhere, right? Because here we've got actually two separate clouds. So Contiv has the ability to uh, facilitate multi-cloud policies by having the ability to say, okay, I'm importing a policy from another cloud. In particular, in this demo, uh, we're gonna focus on those last two policies, external VM to consume, external VM to provide, because we're gonna be using those to uh, interact with the external VMs sitting across on the other cloud. Uh, we also need to create policies for internal communication. So uh, ACI in particular is, uh, has a model where it's, it's a whitelist model. You have to explicitly say which components are allowed to communicate. By default, they're not allowed to communicate. So we, we create a policy, but we haven't actually added any rules to this policy yet. So we'll see at what point we need to do that later in the demo. And networks. So with Contiv, you can actually create multiple logical networks, and you can tag applications to reside on physically separate uh, container networks, um, perhaps for the purpose of different policies. 
in this demo, we shall use just the one demo, uh, one network to keep things simple, but we shall use separate uh, policy groups within the single network. Uh, note that we've set aside a subnet out of which we're going to give uh, IP, IP addresses out. So Contiv has an IP address allocator as well. And you can use that to match your enterprise topology in terms of private address space, public address space. You can have globally routable container IPs, or you can have truly RFC 20, uh, 1918 private IPs and you know use NAT and so on. So it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of how you want to embed this into your enterprise topology. Um, okay, so we are now going to create the uh, policy groups. They are called EPGs in Contiv to align with the terminology with ACI. Uh, but but these are Contiv EPGs, right? But we just happen to use the same uh, same similar terms. Um, so we created a default group, and uh, now we are going to create the privilege group. Um, if you recall our application map, we had these different groups with different permissions. So now we're creating the privilege group. Um, if you notice here, in, when we created the privilege group, we added ex additional external, poly external contracts to the privilege group. So these are typically administrator actions. Uh, administrator will say the privilege group gets more contracts and the non-privilege group gets less contracts. And then the applications consume those groups and contracts. So uh, everything, all of these groups are wrapped up in what we call an application profile. And that's the uh, encapsulating object which is sent over to the controller of the physical network, in this case, ACI. So we've done that. We've pushed all this information to ACI. Um, let's take a uh, look at the APIC GUI. So. Uh, so what, what happened on the ACI side? So we were doing, so we talked about having, there being different roles, right? So there would typically be a network fabric admin role. That will be the person managing the ACI network. There will typically be a DevOps admin or somebody managing the container orchestration layer, and we expect that will also be the admin managing the contiv layer, right? So all of the CLI operations we saw so far were the for, for, the, for the DevOps admin, right, uh, who's typically working on the server side. This is what the network admin sees, right, who, the person administering the ACI network. So he actually sees that a tenant got created. Uh, this was pushed through the programmatic interface of the ACI controller into ACI by Contiv. Uh, it happens to be called default in this case, uh, not particularly imaginative, but that's what it is. Um, and let's see. So what does, so this have been, all of these have been uh, programmatically created into ACI. So we see that he's got two application profiles. Uh, this is that Contev Infra app profile, which we just pushed. And this, this particular profile is actually pre-created. So we could do this in any, any sequence. You can have a profile for the VM cloud, and then they have the container cloud connect to it or you can have it pre-created for, first created for the container cloud and have the VM cloud connect to it. In this case, we had the VM contract pre-created as an external contract, which is this, this one on the right, and then we uh, consume, and we, sorry, we, we created the container contract from the Contiv side. Uh, we, we could spend a lot of time going into this, I'm not gonna go into every detail here, but uh, uh, we have some demos on our website and Please feel free to come by our booth as well. Uh, just quickly, this shows the two EPGs that got created, the default group and the privilege group. I'll expand it if it helps a little bit. Um, and uh, you, know, you can examine the details of the security policies. You can even see the details of the container endpoints. Once we create the containers, this network admin will see endpoints and be able to do network administration and monitoring um, just like non-containerized endpoints. So this goes to the point that Himanshu was referring to. You get that visibility of all the endpoints in the network. Uh, it's not like there's this mysterious portion of the network that is hidden, right? This is all regular networking. And at the same time, you have the administrative separation between um, the network admin and the DevOps admin. Let's go back to the CLI and, and do the rest of the demo from there. Um, so now, we are deploying our application. So let's deploy the application tier one. 
Uh, now we're doing uh, OpenShift commands here, so we created a new project. And we're going to deploy an Nginx uh, deployment right here, pretty standard Nginx uh, Kubernetes deployment. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's create it. Let's create the service, which is the Kubernetes service that uh, uh, gives you that abstraction uh, over the deployment that's been created. Um, and then a route, right? So we, if you remember the application picture, we wanted to have a load balancer, uh, ex external load balancer uh, mapping to a service with, with multiple backends. So we just did that. Um, let's now create the containers in the privilege group. Uh, so now this is a typical flow of the developer that we're doing here, right? Earlier we were doing the administrator's flow. Um, so he creates uh, this application. He's deploying the different tiers. Uh, one thing to note is that when he's creating the privilege tier, he has the ability to annotate uh, using these labels right here, saying that, oh, by the way, these, this deployment uh, needs to be treated a little differently. I wanted to use... Uh, that group called the privileged group. So the application developer knows best what, what kind of communication patterns he needs, and he tags his application accordingly. Uh, but the groups were pre-created by the admin. Okay? So, uh, so he goes ahead and creates the privileged group. Now, um, we see that uh, all these four pods are running. So the, the first two tiers are running. Um, that all looks good. Let's check, is the application working? Um, is, has it exposed a URL? So uh, let's actually go to uh, the web and just open up the URL which this application exposes. So this is what it does. Nginx was the first layer, and that's what. So this is the outside world now talking to this hybrid application, right? Um, We could play around with it a little bit more, but uh, I think we're going to be tight on time, so I'm going to skip some of that. Um, so, so right here is what you know. We, we had set up that this was the URL we want to uh, expose this application's capabilities on, and that's how we got it. So, um, so essentially, that entire the top level load balancer, the tier one and the tier two, they've all been deployed. The load balancer is working now. Uh, let's check reachability. So let's check reachability of tier one to tier two, as well as to the external virtual machine. Uh, we're going to do that here. So tier one was the Nginx. Let's just pick any of the Nginx containers right here. And Let's do a first check. Can it reach the virtual machine on the other cloud? Okay, That happens to have this address. We're just going to use regular pings. We could do other things like curls and so on. So we apparently tier one cannot reach uh, the external cloud, which is good because that's how we set up the contracts for the default group versus the privileged group. So this is good. Um, can it talk within its peer group? Yeah, sure, it should be able to. Let's try. Yep, so the two Nginx containers can reach each other. Can it reach tier, tier two? Um, no, not yet. Because if you recall, we need policies even for internal communication. So we added the policy, but we did not explicitly add a rule said these two groups can talk internally. So we'll do that in, in just a minute. So uh, all the expected required communication patterns are working both within the cloud as well as across clouds. Let's continue. Um, we can check tier two. We'll, we'll do just, just the one check on tier two. Uh, let's see. Um, so let me just take a brief uh, second here. I mean, is this clear, the, the flow we've been doing? We had the application pattern. We had the two side-by-side -side clouds. We're deploying an application, which is split across two clouds. And then we're checking the patterns of each component of the application. 
So hopefully that was clear. And you know, we can go into more uh, details in the Q&A. Uh, this was the quote unquote privilege peer, tier, sorry. So yeah, so the privilege tier can reach the external virtual machine. So the privilege tier can communicate across clouds. The non-privileged tier can't. And um, let's add that additional remaining policy. So we, we had one internal communication pattern that was missing. So let's fix that by adding that rule. Um, let's try that again. So we will try to get from the privileged tier to the non-privileged tier. Yeah. So, so adding that rule uh, added that whitelist capability now. So uh, basically, you have to explicitly enable, as we said earlier, and we explicitly enabled that particular path. So, uh, so essentially what we've seen so far is that we were able to deploy a relatively complex application with requirements to run on a mix of virtual machines and containers with communication patterns required between clouds and within the same cloud. And we were able to do all of this uh, with the Contave uh, policies and which as and when needed, it talked to the ACI, but it was essentially the DevOps admin doing all of his application level policies at the DevOps admin role. So we've configured all of, uh, we've confirmed all of this. So uh, th that's it for the, app, for, the, for the demo. I also show, want to show one, one, one thing before we end, which is, so we, we saw all this going on, but what was actually happening at the physical layer, right? Uh, a lot of us are networking people. We like to see where are the packets actually flowing. So let's look at that. So if you recall, this was our demo topology picture, right? We had two side-by-side -side clouds. We created this application, which was sort of split across these two clouds. Now those colored dots represent the containers and the virtual machines, right? So you have the two tiers, the green and the red were running in the container cloud, the blue is the virtual machine running in the virtual machine cloud. If we had done this the normal way, we would have treated these as two separate clouds. The only way normally you want to communicate to the cloud is through its officially exposed endpoints. You don't want to have backdoor paths, right? That's, that's bypassing the uh, administration boundary. And you know normally you don't even have visibility to that. So if you had treated this as normal two clouds, what would have been the communication path? It would have been something like this. This red, red container wants to reach the blue virtual machine. It would have to go out of the cloud A through its WAN router, for example, possibly go through some WAN routing, or even if it was a, there was a direct connection between those, those two routers, come back into the virtual machine cloud through a floating IP, perhaps, floating IP-based uh, service, perhaps. And this would be inefficient through a, because of a number of reasons. A, uh, latency is much higher. You're going through so many different hops. B, your bandwidth, your, your, your traffic is passing through bottleneck points. You see those WAN routers there, right? Typically, there'll be one or two WAN routers in each cloud uh, or logical routers which are providing the external connectivity. So you are having to go out of, of, of the WAN routers, come back in, go through multiple NAT operations, right? That uh, uh, part over there would need to go through an SNAT operation on the way out, a DNAT operation to the floating IP on the way in. This would be very inefficient. So if you are doing the naive way of spreading an application across a multi-cloud, you would be taking uh, some such network path. Uh, but all this would be hidden if you were not really thinking about what's going on under the covers, where's the traffic flowing to make this hybrid application work. But the way we did this, because we had that visibility, we actually took that direct path. So this was the more efficient path that our demo just took, the blue line. We, when we wanted a red part to communicate with the virtual machine, we routed directly 
without going out of the cloud and coming back in. Okay, we had, this was facilitated by a number of Contiv features. A, Contiv has non-overlay networking. So we actually used, uh, in, in ACI is also a form of non-overlay networking. There is some overlay going on in the fabric, but between the clouds and the ACI fabric, it is non-overlay. So you can actually route to the IP address of the backend. That's how we were just pinging directly to the IP address of the, of the virtual machine, right? Um, we, we also had some of that in, in the way we had set up the contracts. So this is, this is a important uh, sort of visualization of what was really happening when an application was working across these clouds. And this is why we think uh, the combination of Contiv and ACI is very compelling especially when you're doing multiple clouds, mixes of containers and, and, and virtual machines and bare metal, uh, and uh, which we believe will be a pattern uh, necessary as we migrate from virtual machine patterns to some kind of mix of containers and virtual machines. So, so this is essentially uh, sort of a look at the network topology. Uh, with that, uh, that's all we have for now. Uh, we have a website where you can get a lot more information. Uh, uh, all of us are on our Slack channel where we answer questions. Um, so we uh, invite you to go ahead and try a contiv with or without the ACI feature. And uh, we are always looking to add to it. So with that, Himanshu and I will now take any questions you may have. We do, uh, we do have a, probably a couple of minutes for some quick Q&A. Um, we do have to sort of start making time for the next presenters, and our guys need to go have some lunch and back in the AV room. But I'm sure Sanjeev and Hamanchu will be happy to stand up here, take some questions. It looks like Charles might have a question. Yes. Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, thanks for that. I, I really uh, appreciated the way the traffic could be routed more efficiently between the two clouds. But I also imagine with um, Everything we did there was by IP address, at least in the demo. Um, when you have containers and VMs, I assume there'd be cases where you wouldn't be routing by IP address. They might not have a dedicated IP address and have no overlay. Could you discuss a bit more about how that works? So you're referring to perhaps like how would service discovery work, uh, right? So I think we need to uh, think through how we can leverage DNS to provide you the ability to point to the IP addresses. I mean, I, just, I don't see any issue with that. You can have a, a DNS that gives you resolution across uh, four endpoints in both clouds. And then each of them can use that DNS service to say that, OK, if I want to map to my backend VM, I actually get back an IP address which is, uh, you know, which is analogous to what we demoed. So I think that would be a way to do it, but I think uh, that's a great uh, point that we should uh, you know, think through the service discovery and we'll probably uh, incorporate that into a future demo. Um, but it's, it should be possible. Right, and just, just to add, just to add to I mean, and my interpretation of your question, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, basically in this demo, we are exposed, we, we are running at the same IP address level in some sense, right? So we are exposing the internal IP ranges of your clouds to each other. Right. So when we were running with that 29 or whatever IP space, that thing was visible in the whole fabric. There was no natting or nothing going on. Similarly, from the VM cloud side, that 111 address that you saw, it was visible inside the ACI fabric. So, I mean, we are effectively leveraging the ability that we are sitting on the same layer three reachability endpoints. And you're assigning uh, an IP address to every container? Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So we right. skipped a lot of those details. Yeah. Uh, Contiv has one IP per container and lots yeah. of other things. I think everybody's hungry. So yeah. um, Hamanju, Sanjeev, thank you very much. Stop by the Cisco booth, uh, demos, more questions. And um, don't forget your runs on Cisco running socks as you go out the door. So <laughs> thank you all very much for coming today. Thank you. Thank you.